So the Ministry of Justice have opened an investigation after one of the men convicted of killing Stephen Lawrence was reportedly using a mobile phone in prison. In a photograph obtained by the Daily Mail, David Norris is seen taking a selfie inside a cell, showing him wearing a gold watch, designer clothes, and with the TV and Xbox in the background, raising questions about prisoner lifestyle. Well, those questions are particularly painful for Neville Lawrence, Stephen's father, who said he was disgusted. One of his son's killers was able to send selfies to friends and questioned why he was allowed to live an apparent life of luxury. My son is turning in the grave to hear what's what this man is doing. You know, he's living a better life than I am, and I haven't done anything wrong. And so, when you do something wrong and you go to prison, you should pay for what you do. He's not paying for it. He's living the life that he wouldn't be living if he was out here. So are we too soft on prisoners in the UK? Are they being given too many privileges and perks? We're joined now by former Met Police Chief Superintendent Palm Sandu, who says allowing prisoners perks is not fair on the victims of their crimes, alongside former prisoner and filmmaker Chris Atkins, who says conditions are brutal and there's a base level of humanity that prisoners are entitled to. Good morning to both of you. Morning. Chris, I wonder if we start, you can start with the father of Stephen Lawrence, mm. of course, who is so uh, upset by what he's seen because it just... You know, the reality for them is mm. Stephen is still not with them. He's in a mm, grave and they can see the person that's been found guilty of his murder living a life of luxury, so it seems, in prison. You can understand the frustration from the family, the frustration from people looking at that picture mm. that would sense that, you know, wh where is the penance this guy's paying? I mean, God, I'm the last person who's going to come on television defend the killer of Stephen Lawrence and your heart mm. completely goes out. Uh, to, 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 to Neville Lawrence and, you know, they've suffered injustice after injustice and this feels like another injustice um, on top and your, your heart really goes out to him. Um, uh, it, there are rules in prison. The, the perpetrator in this case has broken those rules. You know, he shouldn't have a mobile phone, he shouldn't have a lot of those items and he's being punished for it. I think that's completely separate to extrapolate the idea that prisons are somehow too soft. I spent quite a bit of time in HMP Wandsworth and prisons there are absolutely horrific and brutal. If anything, they've got worse now in recent times with prisoners spending up to 24 hours a day in their cell. Um, there's very little treatment for mental health problems um, and people come out far worse than when they went in. Mm. And what do they do? They commit more crimes and create more victims. So we know that the, the, we know the mobile phone is illegal. It's yes, having a mobile phone in, in prison it's is an a offense, criminal, criminal offence. Offense. So right. somehow that has been smuggled in. Yeah. But what about the other things that we see in the picture? The gold watch, the designer clothes, the television, the Xbox. How would those items have come to be in his cell? Well, TVs are standard in all prison cells. And actually, when you have prisoners who are locked in their cells for 23 hours a day, as most of them are, uh, it's actually the prison officers who want them to have TVs because it gives them something to do, otherwise it creates extra levels of violence. So TVs in prison cells is absolutely standard. You know, those other items, it's very difficult to pick out from a sort of blurry photo, whether it's a de designer watch or not. You're getting away from the bigger problem, which is our prisons are a dysfunctional mess, they're too violent because there's too many assaults on officers, there's too much suicide, there's too much self-harm, mm. and that's because of the terrible conditions. So to say this one idiot has a gold watch or whatever it is, to then say, oh, prisons are too soft, where I think prisons are too brutal, and the statistics back that up. Palmer Sandu, a lot of people will... I mean, frankly, everybody is going to sympathise with Neville Lawrence, aren't they? You, your son is brutally murdered, and one of the people responsible is taking selfies, and in the background, they seem to have um, all sorts of ways to keep themselves entertained, wearing their own clothes, nice gold watch, aviator sunglasses. How on earth is that allowed to happen? Can you understand Chris's point that actually we have to treat prisoners with a modicum of respect, perhaps give them incentives for better behaviour? Because a lot of people will think, lock a murderer up, throw away the key, give them nothing. I'm actually disgusted that anybody is in a prison cell and is able to send out selfies like that and disgusted that they're in a nice, warm, cosy cell sitting there enjoying their lives because what we've got to remember is people aren't put in prison for one offence. Normally, they've committed four or five offences before they're locked up and they deserve to be there and they deserve to be punished for the crimes that they've committed. And what we've got to remember is there's three reasons to put a person into prison. The first one is to protect the public. The second one is, second one is as a deterrent and um, third one is rehabilitation. 
Now, I'm really pleased that Chris is saying it's awful in prison because that's what people need to hear. When you've got young people who are thinking about a life of crime, they need to hear how awful and how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Not to see photographs of people with Xboxes, gold watches and wearing their own clothes. That's the wrong image. OK, let me put, put it a different way then. And I think, Chris, this is probably mm. the point you're trying to get to. If you've got someone who's pretty awful, right, first, someone who's capable of brutally murdering, murdering someone, and you don't incentivize them to be better in prison, that can make life very difficult for particularly prison officers. So perhaps you need to incentivize awful people to be slightly better with a television and Xbox and other incentives so that prison officers don't deal with a lot of dreadful people getting worse. I'm going to have to disagree with you there because one of the points of going to prison is rehabilitation. Not to watch TV and play on a play PlayStation or Xbox or whatever it is. And that's where the prison system is failing, and I think we're probably going to agree on this. Mm. And there needs to be rehabilitation. That's education, training. And when you look at prisoners, prisoners go in with a, a variety of skills. You've got teachers in there, you've got people who can read and write, who can help the other prisoners rehabilitate, because they have to be reintegrated into society when they leave prison. Chris, what will happen to a prisoner who is found with a mobile phone? I mean, will the Xbox, the television, the clothes yeah. be taken away yeah. now? Will yeah. be, do you think that the sentence will now be looked at? You know, you know opportunities for, this will feed into opportunities for parole being turned yeah, down. Yeah, th that, that is something for the parole board because he's an indeterminate level prisoner. Can I just come back on this point of rehabilitation? I, talk, I wrote a book about this, it's called A Bit of a Stretch, that was all about my experiences in prison. Mm. And the sad reality is, is that rehabilitation is not happening. Because of the funding cuts by the government, prisoners are locked in their cells 23 hours a day. A lot of them, as you say, go in with problems. They go with mental health problems, a huge number of them. And those mental health problems get worse because they're locked in their cells all day. And there is no treatment for that. There is no education. There is no training. And what happens is these people come out worse than they went in. And what do they do? They commit more crimes because our reoffending rates, I think, are the third highest in Europe. So what you have is people who come out, they aren't fixed as you'd like them to be, they come out brutalised because of our brutal prison system and, and commit more crimes. And what does that do? It creates more victims. So you have more men like Neville Lawrence losing their mm -hmm. sons because our prison system isn't fixing people anymore. Yeah. Uh, lots of you getting in touch with this. Kevin says, I have been in prison and only if you're in an enhanced prison can you buy an Xbox and other things from a catalogue, something that you, you yeah. might know of, Chris. Prisons are not soft, though. It's a life and it's a full regime. It's very tough inside. Uh, Stuart says, without humanity and decency for those in custody, there can be no hope of rehabilitation. But this is from an anonymous email. I feel strongly that prison is too soft. After a family member serving time expressed he would happily go back as it's easy, you have no worries, you live well. Mm. This horrified me. Prisons are now like living in hotels. Chris, when that catalogue was mentioned, you recognised it. What, how does that work? So it's, it's, it's this use of words like hotels and stuff. Yeah. I mean, from my experiences in Wandsworth, I mean, it, it was an absolute hellhole. OK, and, and one of the problems is officers are having breakdowns because they have to work in such horrible, horrible places. You know, mental health problems against officers sure. are sky high. And you don't get that kind of behaviour in hotels. Um, yeah, so there is an it's called an IEP scheme. It was brought in um, by the Conservative government that basically said that if you behave and, and if you follow the rules and you do as the officers tell you, you then get to be an enhanced level prisoner, which means you can wear your own clothes which means you get uh, a bit more time out of your cell and it means you can buy things like an Xbox. The officers quite like that because it means that if the prisoner misbehaves, they can say, you do that again, you're going to lose the Xbox. Yeah. And, they, and they will take that away from people. So it's, it's, it's like with kids, you give them something yeah. positive and if they misbehave, you, you take that positive thing away. OK. And Palm, we can only imagine David Norris will have those things taken away. I'm horrified to even know that there's a catalogue where they can choose Xboxes because there's lots of members of the public victims who have been traumatised by rapes, burglaries, assaults, who haven't got a catalogue, who can't get an Xbox, who can't afford the heating in their <coughs> rooms or their cells, whatever you want to call them, and they themselves are living in tower blocks or overcrowded yeah. conditions. It's not fair and it's yeah. not right.
Uh, a prison service spokeswoman said, we do not tolerate illicit phones in jail and prisoners found with them should expect to face longer behind bars. We've invested £125 million pounds in tougher mm -hmm. prison security measures. It goes on to say that the individual has been placed on a report whilst an investigation is underway and could face further punishment depending on its outcome. Yes, um, that statement says... Those prison security measures include X-ray body scanners that have intercepted more than 20,000 attempts to smuggle contraband behind bars. And we understand it's one of those that eventually discovered that mobile phone mobile. inside David Norris's body after the Ministry of Justice had been tipped off. Department of Health and Social Care told us healthcare providers in prison have robust processes in place to identify and assess and treat offenders with mental health needs.